as crappy as it was, like I was just in love with being at that place and like walking around the tanks and like just not even talking to people, just looking at the equipment and really being in love with what was happening there. And uh, I imagine you like touching the tanks. And, like, <laughs> that, that. It did. That's how it was. Then. <laughs> running your finger along. The yeah, it was weird. Like, I would, I would break away from We're the group and just. Yeah. It was like a Budweiser commercial. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Are you a brewhead? I'm a brewhead. Are you a brewhead? I'm a brewhead. Y'all a brewheads? Yeah, we brewheads. So pour a glass of craft beer. We can do this. Yeah. Well, what's good, y'all? This is C Certified Brewhead. I'm Scott Beer Cole, Beer Enthusiast. And welcome to Beer Nuts Podcast, episode 57. And we are still here in Detroit. Yet, Detroit. Um, yet. Because it's amazing. And we're here at Holmesbury in Ann Arbor. I'd lie. We're not in Detroit at all. No. I apologize. Yeah, we're, yeah. You're in Arbor. Dirty lies. Well, Ann Arbor. We've been, we've been moving around a lot today. Been, so we, and and having a couple beers. So and we're hungover for you. kind of forget where we are. Right and who we are. <clears throat> and who we are. So we have uh, Nick and Tommy from uh, Holmesbury here in Ann Arbor. Um, owner and head brewer. Yep. yep. Correct. Yo, guys, thank you so much for having us. Yeah, yeah of course. Coming. Really appreciate it. Such a cool facility you got here. Thanks. Thanks. And it's brand spanking you. A few months. Yeah, open three months. Crazy. Yeah. Um, how's it all been going? It's been pretty awesome, yeah. We're three months in, about two years to get it open, long grind to, to get here, but now yeah, that we're right. kicked the doors open, it's been pretty sweet. Fantastic. It's been pretty steady. So really? You, you guys were at the Michigan Beer Fest yesterday. Was that Michigan Summer Beer Festival? Was that your first beer festival you participated in? Yeah. Locally really. or just all together? All together. All together. First real beer event, event we've done. We uh, we just made the cutoff. There's a waiting period when you're when you're in the Michigan Brewers Guild to when you can get into a beer festival, and they squeaked us in and let us know like a week and a half ago that awesome. we'd be part of it. So yeah, so we, we literally right like got our booth stuff like the day before. Like, wow, we didn't have yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. our guy was painting together, painting art on our on some <laughs> stuff the night before. So nice. Yeah, well, that was great. That was it. It was awesome. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was really great. Yeah, yeah it was, it's local for us, so that we had a bunch of our regulars. So we're not <clears throat> wearing our swag, and then oh, uh, we saw a lot. So we actually was first that's yeah, before, like, yeah. My eye was drawn to the swag I saw in the, 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 the tank tops, tank. and yeah. I was like, "Wow, man, that's a cool." Oh, okay, yeah. that's what we're interviewing the next day. So <laughs> yeah. like, perfect. So yeah, we, yeah, so it was awesome. Fantastic. So it was good. You got good feedback and stuff from uh, yeah, yeah, it was great. We, we had a lot of other brewers pulling for us too, which was great. I, I know a lot of the, the the Jolly Pumpkin guys and Old Nation guys were telling people to come check out our booth. So I think that Amazing. helped drive drive people to our booth a bunch. It went really well. Yeah. That's great, man. <clears throat> Thanks. So, I guess, let's talk about the beers that we're going to hear first. Um, before Are we all drinking? Stories. So, no, a bit different. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, three of us have the Lots of Dots uh, IPA. Yep. yep. Tell us about this bad boy. 6.2%? Yeah, 6.2 IPA. Uh, Maris Otter, base malt, English Maris Otter. Ah. Yeah, so that, that helps kind of build up the maltiness, a little bit of sweetness in it. And then we hop with Centennial, uh, Galaxy and Mosaic, just a bunch, nice. a bunch of late hop addition, a bunch of dry hop. Um, so kind of a little bit of the dankness from Galaxy, a little bit of the pineiness from Centennial, and then Mosaic is really strong in the flavor too, mm -hmm. that fruity tropical Mosaic flavor. Fantastic. <clears throat> and intentionally hazy, which is uh, our whole thing. We're, we're into this stuff pretty heavy. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was just saying before, to, before we, uh, try not to talk too much before we start recording, but um, the hazy stuff is uh, something that as if you guys listen or watch us at all, you know we don't shut up about it. So we, we thought it was interesting that in Michigan it didn't seem to be a, a hugely widespread um, style of stuff, yet this is the first thing walk in the door here and bam. Um, how do you guys feel about that? Was, was yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely starting to take a hold of Michigan. It's not like the East Coast. We, we spent a big trip, and this is kind of going to how, how we almost met up with you guys in yes. Montreal. We had done a huge trip before we opened, that was, that was a big part of like the culture of uh, like building our beer styles was going and talking to places or people outside of Michigan. So we went to, uh, <clears throat> we went through Montreal, Toronto, Montreal, and then all through New England. So we hit up like the um, Hill Farmstead and the Alchemist and Trillium and all those really amazing breweries there. That was a big influence on Bellwoods, us for sure. Bellwoods, other half. Bellwoods, yeah, yeah, exactly. Wow, you really did all of them, man. Did you go yeah, to Pistol? Awesome. Bissell we Brothers. Brothers. Yeah. Uh, Main, <coughs> we didn't make it to no, Night Shift, no. Yeah. Main Beer so, Company. They were on the last movie. Yeah. Yeah, you can't do a lot. Did you go to like Fiddlehead or Lost Nation in Vermont as well? 
No, Hawks Nation was on the list. We it was a tight it schedule was, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 We, I mean, you guys had one night in Montreal, and we couldn't unfortunately make it. Well. Yeah, we basically tried to go to the places that like could meet with us too, because we wanted to pick, pick people's right. brains and and you know establish some relationships. So. Yeah, sure. right. Yeah, it was there was inter- like we set up. Uh, Meetings with brewers or owners at every single place we went to. Nice. Yeah. Smart. <clears throat> how was that for recess? Because I remember when we spoke about it, I kind of forgot until you reminded me. Um, and I was thinking, I was like, and I remember you said to me that, like, I just want to pick your brain, just like, you know, and I assume that's what you were doing the whole time. Yeah. From even like someone like us who is you know, not in the industry necessarily, like a little outside of but we speak to a lot of people mm-hmm. around or whatever, I guess yeah. we can sort of represent for the drinkers and shit. Yeah. Um, how was that? experience like going through and talking to I mean you said you spoke to John from the Alchemist you spoke yeah. to Sean Hill at uh, yeah. Farmstead like how, how was that for you guys like, yeah, it was awesome it was, yeah. it was everything yeah for, <laughs> for you know for as far as what we're doing here um, it meant it was huge it meant everything it was a, it was very much uh, it very much molded what we do here um, other half was huge for us too yeah. they spent a bunch of time with us those guys are amazing um, so just even down to what kind of can designs we like, what kind of beers we like. You know, we we <clears throat> we don't subscribe to saying that we do New England IPAs. We just we love hoppy beers. We do hoppy beers. Mm-hmm. So I don't I don't add anything to the beer to make it hazy. It's just the way we hop. But <clears throat> uh, we're definitely inspired by how they do things over there. I mean those, yeah. in my opinion it's the best beer in, in the world right now is coming out of that area. So we <clears throat> we definitely took a lot of influence and it, it shaped how we do things here. Are they very willing to give up uh, like industry secrets and recipes and stuff to help you guys along or, or just kind of guide you in the right direction? Um, yeah, some more than others, which understandably, like, yeah. you, know, you don't know me. And you're sure, like, yeah, yeah, give me all the recipes and then reset yeah. Give me all the information right, I want, yeah. but like specifically uh, John at, at The Alchemist, I mean, he'll kind of tell you whatever you want. You wow. know, he's, whatever, you, whatever you want to know, he'll let you know. And he, he really didn't have to spend any time with us, and like he definitely went above and beyond, just like kind of showing us around and what they're all about and their culture and their. Yeah, that was an awesome experience. Yeah, mo- most of the people are pretty cool about giving you some information at least. I think we left like, <clears throat> spending time with the Alchemist and some of the other people on that on the East Coast with a sense of our identity around being more in that style. Where in Michigan, you're pretty. You feel almost forced to get a distribution right away and get bigger when we really just want to stay the size that is um, lets us continue to do what we want to do and have flexibility to continue to just make stuff that we enjoy versus feeling like we're just fulfilling orders. Yeah. Um, and I mean, John, especially, I feel like we we told our staff like a story about him uh, and the way that he reacted to someone mistreating his beer in front of him and how he like was genuine like upset about it. And we left that thinking like. Yeah, that's the way we need to treat the beer. If we're going to pour our heart and soul into what we're doing, then it's we like want to. Right? Yeah, we yeah. want to want to make sure we have control of it as long as we can until we're giving it to the person that should be drinking it. So, right. um, that's cool. Yeah, I think it. We left talking to all those people, feeling very inspired and very aware of the style of thing that we wanted to do being successful somewhere else, since it wasn't really modeled for us in Michigan already. Right. Yeah. And how, like, I guess you guys are some of the few doing this style as the response from the, the, the consumers, your clients, but these places you're at. Yeah, I mean, and it's, it's, and it's a quiet Sunday, not, you know, not the nicest day in the world. Like, yeah. It's pretty good. This is a pretty chill day, which is, which wow. is nice for you yeah. guys to be here. Um, yeah. Oh. But it's still, you know, most, I mean, the inside a little bit, but the whole outside is completely ram. So, I mean, that's, that's a good sign. It's, it's been really well received. I think there's definitely demand for it, especially like, Craft beer enthusiasts in Michigan have been getting East Coast beer sent to us for, you know, you know, the last couple of years yeah. or, or longer. So uh, there was there was pent up demand for it, um, but you know, I feel like for us, we got to talk to the people that started it, which yeah. helped a lot. So we just I feel like there's people that are um, still figuring it out, whereas the East Coast has really figured it out already. Right. Yeah, they know what they're doing. Did they? ever sort of give you an indication if they felt that like this style is somewhat of a trend or if they feel like that you know I guess it came like all of them on IPA or New England IPA it's, it's just what's all do. a trend so everything yeah. <laughs> it's a trend I guess like, yeah. I know that like I guess because these breweries like you know Trillium and Triad they don't have a, they're, they're based on that style the whole yeah. lineup yeah. Is, is that so yeah. like I mean it's not showing up it's <clears> dropping <throat> off yet but did they ever give you an indication like ah oh, you know we'll, we'll switch it up as time goes I don't think they made it uh, my impression is that they didn't make it to be a New England style IP it was they were making stuff that they liked and it happened and to be hazy and 
Yeah, and that's kind of where we're at, too. I feel like the rest of the country is really starting to put that on their cans. New England Isles style IPA, where for them it's, it's I mean, it sounds dumb, but it's just IPA. Like, that's the kind of beer that they make. And, I mean, yeah, everything is trendy in the brewing world. But, like, for me, I mean, this is going to sound cheesy. Like, I, I did it before. It was cool. But I always liked low bitter IPAs and, like, really floral. So if somebody comes out of New Zealand and said, we, we make a hop that tastes like guava and passion fruit, it's like... Yeah, I'm going to use that hop. You know what I mean? And, and like, lots of it. It doesn't need to be bitter, and it's going to be super fruity, and it's going to taste like something that nobody thought hops could ever taste like. Like yeah. not, And I have no, no, no problem with noble hop varieties, and the older style hop varieties are great, and they have a place. And, you know, the woody and spicy is great, but it's like, well, that tastes like guava and passion fruit or oranges and, like, that's just cool. Uh, I that. Yeah, I, I want mean, that in my life. Like yeah. I kind of. Yeah. Why would I not do that? Yeah. At least in my taste, that's you know, absolutely. It makes it makes sense to, yeah. for so me. Is it genuinely then following what you you're making what you like to drink essentially? Is that the primary motivator, or is it? <clears throat> absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We're, yeah. We're, <laughs> for sure. We're the harshest critics of our own beer for sure. We constantly have sit down sit downs where like. He's very. He feels very comfortable, and I feel comfortable getting advice from him about like just shitting on the beer if it's not as good as or it's not up to par where we want it to be. And all the beers have been great so far. I think that there's definitely like room for improvement. And if we don't like it, we don't really brew it. I mean, you know, I I appreciate really great stouts or really I like a lot of dark beers, but <clears throat> it's not completely our thing. So we have one stout on. It's sometimes it's on, sometimes it's not. We don't really have a lot of dark beers. Mm -hmm. um, we definitely gear towards concentrating on specific styles that we really enjoy. And I, I, my like hand answer when people like will compliment the beer a lot of times is this is the worst it will ever be because uh, it's always we're gonna be, we're gonna be obsessed right. with with refining it and getting better. And if something feels stale to us at some point, then we can stop making it. As long, I mean, like I said earlier, if you're if you're cranking out you know two hundred thousand barrels of one beer, it's yeah. tough to stop. But you know, we hope to stay at a size where. We're not making beer we don't love. Right. So I guess we'll, we should jump back on that note to your both your stories. So it's always interesting to see how people got into beer and got to where they are. So yeah. like, you know, do you guys want to break down sort of how you got into it? Maybe you know whether you were home brewing before or how that. I am not a brewer at all. I actually was uh, in home health care before this. Loved craft beer. Um, wanted something like this in Ann Arbor. And I had a supportive wife that encouraged me to move on to do something I'd be passionate about. Um, I had identified that there were a lot of breweries run by brewers that weren't necessarily the op side. So I liked the idea of taking on the operations and handling the day-to-day -day kind of back-end stuff to free someone up like Nick to just do their thing, right. but, you know, without having to worry about uh, payroll or other shit. So, right. um, and, you know, kind of jumped into it without even knowing Nick yet. Second I like talked to Nick, it was like, like we oh, are this is meant it. to be together. We're yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, that was April of 2015, like started writing a business plan. Um, and, and in July of 2015 had Nick on board and basically didn't even, uh, didn't even get the building till March of 16 and then didn't open till April of 17. So, right. um, he fresh then. and he had, he had a year of being down, uh, he moved from Traverse city, uh, where he was at, uh, down to Ann Arbor. We had a, a little over a year of brewing a pile of batches out of my garage, wow. uh, having just a group of, out. having a group of friends yeah. that were committed to giving us feedback on them and just being harsh critics. Good mates. T tough yeah. job. Yeah, 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 it was really tough. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Free beer. Free beer. Again, really? Yeah. It was for poker yeah. night, too. So <laughs> <laughs> every, every week at poker night, we'd have a whole, we'd have a keg rated with nice. beers ready for us. on tap, rating system. <clears> and, uh, <throat> but that was awesome. And, and that also helped us like build a little community of people that were just like really felt so invested into it. And like, happen. yeah. So it was awesome. Um, but yeah, and then after, and then we had time to travel that year too, and, and really refine what we were doing while the construction process was going on. Right, and that was why you guys came to like, to promote and yeah. And made and yeah, that was we had done a, um, a Portland trip earlier that year, and then uh, Portland, then, Oregon, yeah, Portland, oh, Oregon, yeah. yep, and then did a, a whole East Coast Vision Quest 
in October of yeah. 16. So that was like just, that was your research phase? Yeah. And oh, then yeah, we did a, a bunch of traveling in, in Michigan as well. We did Swansea. Yeah. Swansea Day was at Jolly Pumpkin, which is Cantillon's. Right. Uh, they released the Swansea beer. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. It was yeah. And that was a big part of it, too. It was ridiculous. It was, it's essentially the best sour beers in the country all in one place for a beer festival. So had that had a lot of... It was Hot ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was crazy. So that had a, definitely had a lot of influence on the sour beers that we do here. Okay. So where are you from? How'd you <laughs> <care>? <laughs> totally. Break it down. I jumped in. I am. Uh, 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 <laughs> how, long, how far back do we want to go? I'm. I'm from New Jersey originally. I was born and raised in, in New Jersey. I grew up like 12 miles outside of New York City. Right. Um, I kind of got into cooking when I was in high school. Um, this is all going to lead up to the final answer. No, no, the yeah. The people want the full details. Yeah, right. I went to school three elementary. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I grew up in Jersey. I, I worked at my uncle's uh, catering business doing Italian food. You know, obviously Northern Jersey is a lot of Italian. So I worked, I did a lot of Italian food and I kind of really got interested in cooking and I decided I want to go to uh, culinary school. So I went to Johnson & Wales University in Providence, Rhode Island. And, um, it's, it's one of the better culinary schools in the United States, so I was really excited about that opportunity. And uh, I got a degree in culinary arts there, and I <clears throat> was really, really racked with debt because I had gone to private college, so I, I had to take a job that would, you know, kind of take care of me a little better. So I didn't necessarily get that dream job in a kitchen that I really wanted to work. I, I took a, uh, a job at a university in New York City, running the law school food service department, which. As you can imagine, is not super exciting. Or like a, a great creative outlet, and I was kind of really grinding away and, and really like not loving the way my, the direction my life was going. I was, you know, I was definitely not happy to go to work every day and doing the grind and drive from New York to to Queens every single day. And it was just, a, you know, it was kind of a a, a little bit of a miserable point in my life. And uh, you know, they were cutting back and they had uh, they started laying people off, and I got laid off the whole time. I was kind of in really into home brewing, and I really was like, like a lot of guys, was just like, I wish I could make this, you know, my profession. And I, I got laid off. <clears throat> I had volunteered a few nights at a local brewery in New Jersey called Cricket Hill Brewery, and um, just for their bottling run, they had a a bottling line from Germany that was made in the 1960s and cool. all the directions were in German and nobody oh, spoke shit. German and <laughs> I was just like grinding out on this machine and I, and I was like as, as crappy as it was like I was just in love with being at that place and like walking around the tanks and like just not even talking to people just looking at the equipment and really being in love with what was happening there. And uh, I imagine you like touching the tanks. And, like, <laughs> the that, it did. That's how it was. <laughs> then. Just running your finger along. The yeah, it was weird. Like, I would, I would break away from the Working group the and just. Yeah. It was like a Budweiser commercial. Yeah. Like, <clears throat> and uh, so I got laid off, and they, mm -hmm. they really didn't, they really didn't bring on a lot of employees. They had a lot of interns. Um, so I took an internship there, and I was a full time unpaid intern for four months. And I just like, you know, I, I had applied to other places. I applied to Rutgers University, it's a big college in New Jersey, and they have a great dining, dining program. It was, I would have been a state employee, and it was a great offer. Mm -hmm. And like, I just was like, you know, no, I don't, I'm gonna, yeah. like, you know, I'm gonna probably be in financial, uh, in, a, in a bad financial situation for a long time, but, you know, I'm, I'm just gonna pass on that because I can't imagine going back to that life. It was, yeah. it was just like, it wasn't an option for me anymore at that point. I had to, I had to be in brewing. Um, I didn't tell my parents that for a long time because like <laughs> they would have been super angry about that. But so I, I, I took that full time internship. I did that, and then I got a job offer at um, Five Oak Gas Show Breweries, a little brew pub in New York City, um, just brewing in their basement as an assistant brewer, and just really grinding it out and, and working super hard there and. I was there for a year, and then I, I was applying around, and I got a job opportunity offered to me at a uh, Right Brain Brewery, which is up in Traverse City. Yeah, yeah. That. yeah, it's a pretty, it's a, it's a decent sized brewery in Michigan for those who aren't aware. And the, uh, it was a great opportunity, and like I got the job, and then two weeks later, I was living in Traverse City, where I'd never been before. I'd never seen Traverse City, or you know, my my wife, she's my girlfriend at the time but she's from Michigan she's from southern you know or the southern part of Michigan and is that why you applied to no not really I was applying everywhere and no one would have me at that right. point like I didn't really have a lot of experience um, 
And uh, Right Brain was one of the only places that, that ended up getting back to me, and it, it really, really worked out. You know, I drove up to Traverse City from, from New Jersey, and uh, I, after less than a year, I had moved up to the head brewer position. I was there for uh, almost four years. Um, it was an awesome experience. Um, and I started to want to make a move. I'm not really a winter person, so you guys, being from Toronto, Canada, or, or Montreal, are probably a little... Still doesn't make us winter people. Yeah, yeah. I was just, you know, much. the first winter I was up there, it was okay, and then the next winter was 150 inches of snow, and it was, uh, you know, negative 26 degrees with no wind chill, and I was just like, yeah, I can't. I, I, don't, I can't live I can't, like I can't live this life. <laughs> The snow pile in front of my house would, would get like as tall as the house. It was you, you couldn't see the house anymore. Um, so I started, yeah, right. So I started looking around, and I had applied. Uh, Tommy posted something on a, on a brewery industry website, and I I applied. He called me like 20 minutes later, and it was nice. like this seems like you know this good seems fit, legit. Yeah. And then yeah, we came down. I talked to him, and you know, we it was a really really good fit, and then. I came down, moved down here, and uh, it was just a, a year of grinding on pilot batch beers and mm-hmm. trying to figure it out. And yeah, now, now we're here. So, yeah. is there something to like, say, coming from working for another brewery and stuff? And I know it's like another new job, but it's kind of different though because you guys are working it out together. Like, you got your vision, and you're like, all right, why well, need someone to see this vision through? And then you've been the head brewer, but this is like you get to create this. Like, yeah. What your job is is really creating. Like you make the brand and do everything else, but you're you're making this, which is what people come back for. So I mean, that's kind of cool that you get to actually really like yeah. have a hands-on uh, you know, role. Yeah, I think professionally, it's definitely the best experience of my life because you know, my I'm not a very strong I'm not very strong on the engineering side of the brewing or the the microbiology, but my strength is definitely recipe writing. Like I'm familiar with flavor. And aroma. Like that's do, that's right. kind of my background. Like I understand flavor, so like it's coming from a food bag, a culinary background right. that only makes sense. Right? Exactly. Yeah. So writing all the recipes from scratch and doing it the way I want to do it is exactly where I want to be. Um, it, yeah. So it was awesome. You know, it's great. There's there's some downsides because at a big production brewery we have cellarmen <clears throat> that scrub the floors or clean the tanks, and you know the first few months here I didn't bring anyone on to help me because I thought I was gonna be able to do it on my own which was a silly thing to even think yeah. but so I'm doing everything back there and uh, so there's, there's definitely a lot of a lot more work that goes into it but like it, it never feels like it's uh, a pain or like it's I don't want to come in, in the morning it's like yeah. every day is awesome yeah. you know what I mean yeah. so I I'm very that's not lost on me I'm very aware that this is a great opportunity you know mm-hmm. so the other range then I guess the type of stuff like we didn't even talk about yoga we kind of we just talked about the yeah the hazy stuff what, right. what do you got this is same same different so it's that's definitely not a beer, right? see, yeah this is our biggest our biggest selling beer I brew more of this than anything else and it's it's not necessarily like a thick hazy beer but it's it's not a clear beer it's, it's never it's never a clear beer for the most part but um, I contracted hops with this beer in mind for sure for like growing for the next five years gotcha. um, it is a lot of American two row um, and some Vienna malt. I really like Vienna malt and IPAs uh, instead of any kind of crystal malt. And then uh, it's Mosaic, Citra, and Simcoe. Nice. Which <clears throat> you can't really go wrong with that combination of hops. Um, and it's definitely low on the IBU range. I mean, for IPA, it's it's as low as probably you can get. Uh, so a lot of late hop additions, a lot of like floral, more citrusy than, than lots of dots for sure. But uh, like kind of a crisp, easy drinking beer and we just, we just fly through this beer I and mean, we constantly brewing yeah. it, constantly bringing it back, and right. hopefully canning it at some point in the near future. Fantastic. So that was actually another question. I was just going to ask, where did the name Same Same Different come from? I was in Thailand earlier this year, and a lot of people said the same, same, but yeah. different. So yeah. 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 It's kind I thought of, so, I just need to ask. Yeah, so, yeah. so, that's, so that's part of it, um, and that kind of correlates with the fact that we do Asian street food here. Yes, right. Like it's, it kind of fits our... And then also, it fits with... It was a kind of a good baseline name for a beer, especially if we thought it might end up being a staple of ours, just because it's a lot of uh, I don't know. I think the the idea of same same but different fits with what we're trying to do too. Right, it's just right, like true. Trying to find things that are a little bit like off the beaten path and not necessarily overdone. Um, 
Yeah. So. Okay. Sick. I like it. No, man. You guys. Thank yeah, you guys much for your time. Yeah. yeah. Appreciate sure. you coming by. This place is sick. Great now, job. You actually got us uh, when you were grabbing the beers. Uh, Nick was telling us about the food and the menu. I'm like. Gonna have to get some Work. dinner. Now. Yeah, Dude, yeah. yeah. Like, I feel like we're gonna be yeah. for a little bit. Yeah. Like, uh, oh, yeah. This is fantastic. The beers are amazing. We want to shoot a quick uh, versus video and compare yeah. the IPAs and uh, get Dave in something. Brad has been hanging out with us when I was like just sitting there. He's like, yeah. uh, legend. Can I? Can I? Can I play, guys? <laughs> can I play <laughs> beer, guys? I want to play beer. <laughs> um, but where can everyone find you guys online? Homesbrew.com. I mean, everything's just at, at Homes Brewery. Brewery. On, yeah. Uh, Instagram. Yeah. yeah. Homes Brewery. Uh, Facebook, Twitter. Yeah. Like. yeah. MySpace isn't set up yet. Not yet. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is your mixtape okay. coming out soon? <laughs> <laughs> Was that is your off your mixtape? I'll keep an eye out for it. We'll keep an eye out for the mixtape. Um, <laughs> so thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed the uh, episode, check us the thumbs up on YouTube. Hit subscribe. If you want to hit us up on social media, at BAOS Podcast, because of course you do. And check out the uh, actual podcast on Apple Podcasts. I said the word podcast 14 times. Yep. Uh, and uh, Google Play, Speaker. What's the other one called? Stitcher. That's the one. All that Stitcher. stuff. Stitcher. Stitcher. <laughs> I can't say anything about this guy, Michael. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bullshit. Racist. Hi, right, yeah. John. That's yeah. it. Thank yeah. you again, guys. Cheers. Yeah, Get in.